Hello and welcome back to Rage Gaming. Pretty soon, no rest for the wicked. Yep, today we're talking about that upcoming ARPG created by the devs behind the beautiful Ori in the Blind Forest, it's Moon Studios. It's a big change of pace for the team behind a heartwarming, platforming adventure game. This is instead a bloody intense, brutal gameplay-wise experience, but is a long-term passion project that they've talked about how they've always wanted to do, but it's only until now that they can actually attempt it. They have this clear goal to do something fresh and unique in what is a pretty stagnant genre of ARPGs, and they've definitely achieved that visually. Mechanically, we've got a really dense, almost Souls-like style experience. They're doing a lot different here basically, I think it's really special. And we've had a chance to play it early, we have a whole video on that. But now it's opening up to early access, we can see what everyone makes of it. With that in mind, here's 10, or more like more than 10 things, to know for when you're going to jump in yourself. First up, this is early access which it launches in just a few days, April 18th, but it's important to know that it's a Steam Early Access to begin with, which means it's not going to be available on consoles right away. But more importantly, keep in mind this is a real Early Access, not essentially a demo where the devs aren't going to take feedback or make big changes. Everything suggests it's the real deal. Some of my favorite games ever, like say the Subnautica series, were in Early Access for a long, long time, slowly adding content and cleaning it up. Or say another good example of this format, Hades. When done properly, this kind of means we're going to start with what is an unfinished, potentially buggy version of the game. Maybe even imbalanced in various areas, with more content to be released so we can test it in the future. It's still going to be a good representation of the game and how it's going to feel to play, but it's not going to be the full game, obviously. People who play a lot of this early access are going to be the people who fall in love with the game as a concept and how it feels to play, and probably want to help refine the game and provide important feedback. So if you're going to go into this Go in with the right expectations. Maybe you treat it like an early demo, you're just gonna see how it feels to play, but with the awareness that it's gonna be a while before we get the full game, that's gonna be more refined in many important ways. Next, let's talk about the roadmap which they've put out. As revealed, we know they have four steps planned. First is the launch of the early access exclusive to Steam, aka a PC only start. The game is planned for consoles though, both PlayStation and Xbox in our current gen, so we should expect those in early access eventually. But very importantly, the first big update to the early access is going to be the multiplayer update. That means when we first start playing this week, there won't be multiplayer in the game. I think this is smart. If you want a launch to be smooth and functional right away for people to really test, keeping multiplayer out of it is probably going to resolve a lot of potential issues before they even happen. Then in your first major update, you're going to want a reason to have people come back in and try the new stuff, see how you've responded to feedback. Well, multiplayer is going to be a very good incentive for that, and it's really important to get right in an ARPG. Then we have these other updates like the Breach update, whatever that's going to be, maybe new content and further updates beyond that, which could potentially be, you know, console time. We don't have exact timelines here, but it is reasonable if they want longer periods to work on different issues that might crop up, but I imagine they do have their own schedule. Next then, how big is this early access? Well, as we know, there's going to be a pretty big starting point to play around in, and it's going to steadily extend out during the early access. We're going to have five major zones to begin with, the Shallows, Auburn Glades, Sacrament, Nameless Path, and the Black Trench for the start, but we have three more zones promised in the first story story update with further story chapters coming and probably more areas with that. The map does look nice and big though, but importantly the area design is very dense in detail and secrets as I'll mention soon. They're not empty spaces. All right, so here's a quick mention of the combat basics. I figure you probably know a lot about that if you're looking at a video like this, but as shown in any gameplay, the combat is all about timing and is rather skill-based. You're not blindly spamming abilities like in your usual ARPG. Each attack needs to be considered. It'll have speed and weight behind it, so you have to aim it and time it for it actually to properly land. You also need to consider the enemy attacks properly, having to evade their attacks, block or parry them. Groups of enemies can be really dangerous in that environment. The weapons come with their own moves sets, just like a Souls game, rather than the character specific being a thing. The moment you equip the weapon, you'll be fighting within its style of play, and apparently there'll be roughly 8 moves per weapon, with over 100 weapons in the game, so that's going to be a lot. That's why this feels very like a souls light style of game compared to your average ARPG. Obviously the goal is to create something very unique for the genre, and with the combat, they've also definitely achieved that. For Souls players, I think this is going to be very interesting to test this genre out. There is also magic in the game, casting spells, teleporting, charged up elements and AoEs, but it does seem quite unique for a game of this nature. It's a combat style rather than just spamming spells under a mana system that regens or something. Okay, next, something I really liked. The fact that there's no procedurally generated areas. Each area is unique and specifically designed by the devs 
which means there's a lot of detail and secrets. You could easily be tricked by the camera perspective. Maybe you think there's a straight path, but there's actually multiple options like fallen tree trunks to climb. They put this real emphasis on dense areas and they talked a lot about vertical progression, meaning climbing things or sneaking under things, exploring every nook and cranny is meant to pay off in this design. They want you to find secrets, they put them in there, so every area should have a lot to explore. Speaking of exploring, you're gonna find lots of chests and loot, and that loot is actually gonna be completely random. That means one run on one save, one character is gonna feel different to the next, because in the same chest, you might get something totally different. That might require you to be fluid and adaptable when playing. You might have a playstyle in mind, but then you find a really good piece of gear or weapon that's just something else entirely. Overall, I think this could be the most risky design choice they're going with. Could backfire on them because it's so RNG. A lot of players want a specific playstyle, not what the game decides for them. I do think risks are good though, and this is what early access is about. Personally, I think I'll enjoy this. In a new Souls game or Souls-like playthrough, I love trying out different weapons and styles, and I don't like being limited. But I also know lots of people who play the same weapon or combat style in every game they've ever played so that might be a problem for them. Either way, if the devs adapt if they have to and provide what is ultimately the most fun, I'm sure I'll be fine. On that note, here's some quick gear details to be aware of. As you go, you'll be finding lots of weapons. The weapons can drop runes, which is basically an item you can take out and put into a different weapon if that's useful to you. So even if you do find something that's not suited to the build or the playstyle you want to play, it could still be useful in that way. Meanwhile, on the other end, Armor comes in three different types, light, medium, and heavy. And so as you might expect, light provides the most agile, evasive movement. Heavy is slower and sluggish, but much more effective at reducing damage when you do get hit. For evasion options though, light means this unique step dodging. While medium has the classic roll, I think medium is probably gonna be the most beginner friendly option. You never know with an early access, maybe the light dash is so busted we all have to use it. If you're wondering as well, my next thing to mention is the various modes of play you can consider. There's gonna be the classic ARPG click to play and move style, but from the beginning, we'll also have WASD support, which has become quite popular as an alternative for ARPGs these days as well. But yes, there will be controller support right from the beginning of this early access, which could be great for a game of this design. Like in a Souls game, I can't stand mouse and keyboard. I will try all three, but I imagine I'm gonna enjoy controller most of all. Next, a tiny nod to the fact that you don't need to be permanently online to play this game. Imagine that. You don't have to be online to play something solo. We've gone down an insane route with games that saying this is a relevant big deal, but that's just where we're at. So I appreciate the devs making it an option with big games forcing online so commonly. They've designed the game to be fully functional in offline mode, and I do think it's a good thing for the launch of early access, maybe the full game as well, since there's going to be issues at launch either way. Going into offline mode could be a way to completely avoid that. Finally, a quick word on Endgame. Yeah, as an ARPG, of course we can have Endgame. It's a vital part of any ARPG. But with this being kind of a Soulsy version, what that actually could be could be a bit open. They have said that there's going to be more than one core activity loop. We don't know all of them or all the details just yet, but we have heard about one a roguelike dungeon format called Serim or Kerim's Crucible, which is available after we beat the campaign. It sounds like when we beat the early access campaign, we'll get to dabble in that straight away, which is pretty surprising if true. You'll be warped into a randomized dungeon and there's gonna be 10 RNG rooms to beat. Apparently this was inspired by Diablo 1 and its dungeon system, where you had 16 levels until Diablo at the end and it gets harder as you go. So we can expect 10 challenges, raising in difficulty. But with the roguelike element referenced, they compared it to Hades specifically, an RNG challenge per room, not always combat focused. It might be platforming or puzzle based instead. The enemies thrown at you though will be completely random. And I would imagine some kind of RNG power system that grows with you and you get choices if it is, you know, roguelike. There will be extremely valuable rewards. So well worth, you know, repeating this content as an end game system, but that's just one end game aspect to consider. And it's nice that we have any info at all. But for now, that's everything I want to talk about. I hope this video proves useful to you guys and you have a good time with it. The devs seem very genuine and very passionate, which is a real breath of fresh air. We're planning on really diving in ourselves and covering it a lot here on the channel, so expect more from us. Until next time though, I've been Hollow, you've been you. Thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye